We're in a time right now where with all the hand washing, sanitizing, and bleaching, I'd guess the majority of our hands look something like this. Dry, cracked, maybe you have some dead skin flaking off. It's a situation that no one wants to be in. How do we deal with this? Well, within all the potential solutions, in my opinion, they end up in two different camps. The first one, you can moisturize with some hand cream. You could treat the dryness from the ground up with a balm and be on your merry way lickety split. Or you could exfoliate with a scrub. The abrasive nature of the scrub will exfoliate the dead skin off your hands and you'll be left with the smooth skin that's been hiding underneath all along. Both of these methods address the overarching problem of dried hands. However, each have a very different function and way of doing this. The cream is geared towards continual moisturization of the skin to help with the cracks, while the exfoliant hones in on getting rid of the dry skin altogether manually. These functions are influenced by the substructures. The exfoliant is able to be abrasive because of tiny jagged crystals within the media. Because of the differences in these structures, you wouldn't want to swap the function. For instance, exfoliating with a hand cream, it's not effective and vice versa. Moisturizing with a hand scrub, ugh, yikes. This is an example of how structure influences function. It might be a little difficult right now to visualize how these tiny structures can build up for an overall function. So I'm calling in a friend for a little help. Legos. I love Legos. The structure of the individual piece allows them to lock into place so you can do a bunch of different things. You could just stack them, nice, simple, clean, and neat. You could maybe build a really elaborate wall to protect whatever you have inside. Or maybe if you're feeling a little gung-ho and particularly excited, you can make a beautiful Victorian home. We're able to explore all of these masterpieces because the structure of an individual Lego allows them to interface together in the perfect way. However, Legos, they can come in all different shapes and sizes, and that might hinder the crafted lock and place mechanism. If you have a jumbled blocks full of Legos of various sizes, you might be able to make the old Victorian home, but it might not be as functional as it would be if you had all the same sizes. And no matter how you swing it, Legos are small rectangular bricks of plastic at the end of the day. So while you can technically make a Lego ball, it wouldn't be functional. No one would want to play kickball with it, and you sure are not going to play some basketball with it. So what's a physicist doing talking about Legos? Well, for my research, I focus on something called a lipid, which it's a really broad category, and within it are waxes. And these are very similar to Legos. So let's walk through this together. We have a block of a lipid, and this is essentially, you can think of it as an old Victorian home from earlier. You can break these into different pieces, and when you look closer, you can see that each of these are made up of structures and they're interfacing together. Zooming in a little bit more, we see within each of these structures, it's made up of smaller pieces stacked together. And once again, if you look even closer into these stacked pieces, we see for the Victorian home, surprise, the individual pieces are Legos. And for the lipid, these are something called domains. And as always, we can break it up even further and see that these are made up of molecules. Now, similar to how Legos interface, how the domains interface, which is influenced by the size, chemical makeup, and many other factors, it will impact what you can build and what you can make with them. How the lipid domains interface together ultimately impacts the large scale properties. So why are we interested in lipids? Well, lipids, they're everywhere and they're ubiquitous throughout your daily life. From inside the medications in your bathroom to the ice cream in your fridge, even in the lotion you put on those dried hands from earlier, they're everywhere. Understanding the structure of these lipids have impacts across all of these industries. But what I'm interested in 
is the pharmaceutical implications of lipids. So let's say you wake up and you have a terrible headache. It's searing, it's throbbing, and it's acute pain that you want to fix fast. Often what we'll do is we'll go into your medicine cabinet, we'll find a pain reliever, and we'll take it. Here comes the terrible part, the waiting game. We have to wait for the expected relief that we will expect to come based off of what that bottle said. Now, what's really interesting and surprising is that the timing between taking that pain reliever for that acute pain and the relief we expect, it's impacted by the lipid within the pill. This is because within many pills, the active ingredients are nestled within a lipid. So the lipid structure and how the Lego-like domains fit together impact how quickly the pain-fighting ingredients can be released. So for the acute pain of the headache, you want relief right away, not in four hours. So ensuring the structure is comparable and compatible with this release rate, it's critical to understand how the pill will work. So how do we study this? How can we test to see if the pharmaceutical pill will work the way we want it? Ultimately, what we want is we want an industrial application to be able to explore this Lego-like structure without being invasive. So if we were looking at humans, we would kind of know an answer of how to do this. We would do this with an MRI machine. So let's say you're skiing and you take a bad fall. Your knee hurts and it hurts bad. So you find yourself at the doctor and you don't wanna go straight into surgery. It's expensive, it's scary. You don't really wanna go under the knife. So what would often happen is that the doctor would use an MRI machine to non-invasively see what's happening underneath the skin. I use a very similar technique for this for my lipids. It's something called nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR. Like I said before, it's very similar to hospital MRI machines. I don't wanna to have to cut open my lipid and invasively see what's going on. I might end up disturbing the structures that I wanna study. So I can look in them non-invasively with this technique. Additionally, I'm able to look in and go into the nitty gritty to explore the local molecular environment or this Lego-like packing structure. With this tool, I'm also able to investigate so many different variables. I'm able to see how temperature changes the packing of these Lego-like domains, or how storage time might degrade the structure or alter it. And more importantly, I'm able to explore how throwing a wrench into the lipid changes the structure, because ultimately that active ingredient that fights that headache, it's a wrench in the lipid structure. And all of this is in hopes for creating an industrial tool to explore these systems during the research and development stage, and then also for quality control once they've decided what pill has worked. Research, it's not conducted in a vacuum, and I definitely could not do this work alone. So I wanna give a very warm and special thank you to the Magnetic Resonance Lab at Montana State University. I also want to thank the STEM Storytellers and NSF Grant to has helped me with my communication skills and has helped crafted this presentation today. And I would like to acknowledge my funders, Lonza Pharma and Biotech.